Hello, fellow project managers, agilists, scrum masters. Today, we're going to debate, will agile replace predictive? Will agile replace predictive? Now, notice how I phrased it. I didn't say, will agile replace waterfall software development? I said, will agile replace predictive? And the reason is, I want us to focus more on the project management versus the development of the product. There is a difference. We have two life cycles on every project. One is called a project life cycle, and the other is called a project management life cycle. The project management life cycle is pretty much how you do the project management of the project. The project life cycle is how you do the development work. So we're focusing more on the project management piece today. Now, let's jump straight into a few questions about the world of predictive. When you think about predictive project management, you gotta remember that predictive is not a bad word. Predictive means planning out as much as you can. Some people would say it's everything, but it's really planning out as much as you can across the breadth of the project. When you plan step by step by step, what should happen and what should follow, that's predictive. Now think about it. If you were working on a project that affected several lives and it would result in huge catastrophic waste, loss of life and adverse events, would you work that project predictively or would you work that project in an agile fashion? And the answer is, you would work that project predictively. For example, a nuclear plant shutdown. There's no experimentation taking place. You know, step by step by step, what needs to happen. In fact, a buddy of mine, Colin, who trains Microsoft of Projects with me, talks about how when he created a schedule for nuclear plant shutdown, he did it to the second. Some of the events, were five seconds apart. So you would plan as much or everything on some projects, and there's absolutely nothing wrong in that. So the general idea is that predictive very well may just have its place. Is it right to call the PMBOK guide predictive or waterfall? When I take a look at the PMBOK guide, I just take a look at descriptions of things project managers do. I wouldn't brand it as predictive or waterfall. In a more inexperienced world, one would brand it as predictive, but truly it is not predictive. They are just naming conventions for things you do anyway. On every project, you implicitly initiate it, you plan it, you execute it, you monitor and control it, and you close it. Whether you're doing this across sprints or whether you're doing this in phases, it makes no difference. So I would not call the PMBOK guide predictive or waterfall. I could call it procedural. In fact, I would say the 49 processes are very step by step by step. So one could say it's more predictive. But depending on how far you drill down, these are just casual thoughts of things that you do day to day on any project. You plan. You initiate, you execute, you monitor and control, you close. You could take a look at the life of a sprint. It starts, you do your daily planning, you get work done, you check, not only in your retrospective, but also in your sprint review. See, you monitor and control in different ways. You monitor and control in your daily scrum, you plan in your daily scrum, you close. So I don't look at the language as being either predictive or waterfall. I don't use those terminologies. Is it bad to say a project is predictive? Absolutely not. I just gave you an example. Now, if you go to the PMI's publication, the Agile Practice Guide right here, the Agile Practice Guide gives you an overview of this model this Agile Suitability Filter Tool on page 125. And it's used to assess which 
approach is best for your project. You've got an agile approach, you've got a predictive approach, and you've got a hybrid approach. And this survey tool, it assesses culture, is there a supportive environment with buy-in for the approach and trust in the team? And then it looks at the team, is a team a suitable size? Think about it, if you've got 200 people working on an endeavor, that cannot be agile. There's no way. Does it need to be agile? In other words, do you need to deliver more predictably or less predictably? Do you need to deliver more incrementally or less? These are all questions you should ask. You need to plan in iterations. If there's absolutely no reason to plan in iterations because everything is known up front and it's gonna affect a whole lot of lives and there's so many people working on the project anyway, perhaps the best choice is not agile. It says here, is the team of a suitable size to be successful in adopted agile? Do its members have the necessary experience and access to business representatives? Sometimes agile, no matter how much you love it, is just not a good fit for the organization or the project in terms of delivery. Now watch this. Every project, in my opinion, every project should be approached with an agile mindset, first and foremost. I'm not talking about delivery. I'm not talking about incremental delivery or iterative planning. I'm just talking about the mindset to adapt, to pivot, to persevere if you need to, but just be adaptable in your thinking. It goes a long way. So should everyone be agile in their thinking? Absolutely. It always offers the best results as proven by PMI's research. Now, the last variable here on page 126 of the Agile Practice Guide, it reads, are there high rates of change? Is incremental delivery possible? And how critical is the project? Now, when we talk about the criticality of a project, let's see how PMI rates criticality and some of the variables that they give you to assess criticality. This is on page 133. It reads, to determine likely levels of additional verification and documentation, rigor that may be required, assess the criticality. We have on a scale of one to 10. Time is the first number there. So if it affects just primarily time, then it's a one. If it moves into the area of affecting discretionary funds, it's somewhere between a two and a four. If it affects essential funds of the firm, then it's a five. And as it begins to affect lives, like a single life that is going towards 10, many lives, definitely a 10. If you take a look at this survey tool that PMI has put in here, you will understand why there's a need for you to assess a lot of variables to ask is agile delivery and an agile approach the best option. For those of you agile fanatics who think it's agile or nothing, I hate to tell you, or perhaps I love to tell you, agile is not the only way. I'm gonna show you here the Stacy complexity model that we all see on page 14 of this book. Let's talk about Ralph Stacy's model. Rest your soul, passed away in 2021. Ralph Stacy is responsible for this brilliant tool called the Stacy Complexity Model. And you find this on page 14 of the Agile Practice Guide. And it reads, teams can plan and manage projects with clear and stable requirements and clear technical challenges with little difficulty. So what exactly are we talking about? We're talking about projects that are in the simple zone right here. We have requirements that are close to agreement and we have technicalities that are understood. We have little technical challenge. Why? Because we've done it before and therefore we would say it is predictive, predictable. For projects like that, they're in the simple zone. We can plan the project in its entirety. Now, as we begin to move into far from certainty and far from agreement in terms of the requirements as well, 
we begin to move into complicated. Complicated means many steps, but it doesn't mean that those steps cannot be followed with a plan step by step. So we could still use a rather predictive approach for complicated projects where we find it difficult is venturing into the world of complex, as you see here. Now, as you begin to venture into complex zone, this is where predictive will begin to fall apart because you're discovering requirements that you didn't even imagine in the very beginning. You're discovering technicalities that you were not even aware of. Things are beginning to emerge. You're going into the complex zone. This is where agile should be used a lot more in terms of the iterative planning, the discovery, and also the delivery. You're going to deliver frequently so that you avert any surprises only to get to the end and the client says, oh, this isn't really what we wanted. So as you go through the project, you're gonna go through various iterations of planning and various increments. The iterations of planning is a risk mitigation tool, is a risk reduction tool, and the continuous delivery is also a risk reduction tool. That's the idea as to why you need to be agile on some projects. Predictive works best when the requirements are well understood, where there's a little chance of change. Agile works best where there's high variability, where there's a need to experiment to discover the best solution, where change is likely. So let me give you an example of complicated. Building a watch, for example, could be looked at as complicated. Yes, there are many steps, there are many levers, there are many parts. But if you follow step by step, can it be done? Absolutely. An example of complex, how about you drive to Kamloops right now from wherever you are? Now, if you are in Kamloops, that's a piece of cake. But for a lot of the populace watching who are in places like Saudi Arabia, Iraq, maybe somewhere in Brazil, driving to Kamloops, you got no clue where it is. You got no idea how to get there. It's a place, but you don't know how you're going to get there. The requirements are far from agreement and the technicalities are far from certainty. You've never done it before. So it's the first time of you driving to Kamloops. You're gonna break your journey into little pieces. You're gonna plan in iterations. You're gonna plan a little bit of the journey. You'll do a little bit of the journey and you accomplish it. And then you replan, and then you do a little more and you discover, oh dear, this road, these treacherous mountains, why did we go this way? We could have gone another way. You see, there's some experimentation that's gonna happen. That's an example of complex. Let's not even talk about cam loops. Let's talk about you driving to work. Do you drive to work the same way every single day? If you've been working there for the past 10 years, likely you have made some choices to go in a different direction because you discovered that what you had been used to for so long on a particular day just didn't work. And this is where you need to be agile. So agile works best where there's high variability, where there's a need to experiment to discover the best solution, where change is likely. Another great image here in the Agile Practice Guide is the continuum of life cycles. So taking a look at this, you can see there are many ways that you can plan or deliver. Let's think about it. We could be predictive in our planning and in our delivery. We could deliver one time. Everything's planned and there's a one-time delivery. But we could also be incremental in our delivery. We could deliver in increments. We could be very iterative in how we carry out work. So we plan in iterations. We work in iterations. We repeat until correct. But we are not going to deliver frequently we deliver one time see that and then we could be iterative in our planning and incremental in our delivery and that's what makes agile agile when you do things in iterations as far as the planning pieces are concerned as far as the staggering of work is concerned and then we are incremental in our delivery that's what makes agile agile so going back to the question, is predictive bad? Of course not. Predictive is 
a better choice in many a situation where there's potential loss of life in huge numbers, where there's a lot of resources that could be lost and a lot of bad things could happen on a huge scale. In those instances, it is better to be predictive. But as I always say, be agile in your thinking. So how can predictive work against you? Predictive can work against you if you're working in a high variability environment and you're trying to do things predictively. How can it work for you? If you're working in a high stakes environment, as it says here in the Agile Practice Guide, and I'm gonna read for you on page 136, they give you two examples of projects. One is a drugstore project to develop an online drugstore to sell cheaper Canadian prescription drugs. And the other is a military messaging system. Now, I don't need to go too far. You see the train coming, you know where this is going. Which of these will be best suited for a hybrid model versus a predictive model? You've probably guessed the drugstore for hybrid, right? And the military messaging system, if you take a look at the profile there, because there's such a large amount of people working on it, 300 people from one vendor alone, right? We tend to see that working better in a predictive environment. But is it possible that parts of the project can be carved off and run as agile? Absolutely. And that is going into the world of hybridization. And this is what the Agile Practice Guide makes you more sensitive to. Let's talk a little bit about agile from past to date. So before the big software boom, there was not really a need to deliver as frequently as there is today. Today, almost every software company under the sun is talking about frequent releases. Why? Because they know that if they don't release frequently, their software is going to become obsolete. You talk about the likes of Spotify or Amazon and their frequency of delivery or Google, and they're delivering every day. They're delivering increments, increments, increments. And this is the world that we live in. But before the software boom, this was not the case. So there was not really a heightened need for agile as much as we see it today. This is the age of rapid releases. We could easily make a case for agile. We need to be adaptive in our delivery and in our planning. In other words, we need to be iterative in how we plan and we need to deliver in increments. We got to deliver software or deliveries quick, fast to the customer. So the question is, have I assessed my project variables and have I considered hybrid options? Have I taken a look at my project through the lens of the PMI's continuum of life cycles? I encourage you, my friends, to not just think predictively and don't just think in an agile fashion, think hybrid. Hybrid is the way forward. When you think hybrid, ask yourself, could I possibly do my projects part agile and part predictive? Maybe I execute the project using agile because it's high variability, but I deliver predictively because that is what makes the most sense. Or I could do it concurrently. I could run my project in an agile fashion and a predictive fashion at the same time, different layers depending on the facets of the project. Or perhaps I could run my project more agile and inject a little bit of predictability where necessary, or run my project more predictively and inject a little bit of agile as I see fit. And this, my friends, is what you need to understand as a professional. Whether you spin yourself as a project management professional or product professional, it really makes no difference. The bottom line is if you're delivering value to a customer, ask the question, have I taken a look at the Stacy model? Do I really know the variables at play and what would work best for my delivery situation? All right. I hope this gave you food for thought. Whether you're using Scrum or Kanban or you're using a predictive method, just look for opportunities to be hybridized. Look for opportunities, you know, on the scale that we saw, on the scale of if you want to make it one to 10, taking a look at PMI's continuum of life cycles. 
ask yourself, how predictive do I need to be on this project? You assess using expert judgment, whether you need to be here, whether you need to be all the way here, you could be anywhere on this continuum, but this is a judgment call you need to make. And if you need to be agile all the way to the extreme, can you guide, direct, and influence? If you need to be predictive all the way over here, can you? It's all about being capable. That's the name of the game. All right, and remember, teamwork makes a dream work. Get with the team, ask the team their thoughts and opinions, and choose a line of best fit. You wanna choose the best development approach. Thank you for joining me today. I'd like to know your thoughts. Does your company use strictly agile or strictly predictive? Or are you hybridized? Let me know in the comments below. You take care and all the very best. Bye for now.